What's up, y'all? So, I want to get started with a trigger warning. I am going to be talking about sexual assault. I am going to be talking about rape. I am going to be talking about narcissism, the cycle of abuse, um, domestic abuse, domestic violence. So, if any of these topics might be triggering for you, you know, this this is your heads up. Do what you feel is right. If you want to watch or um, maybe take some time and then come back and watch, feel free. Ball's in your court, but this is me letting you know um, that I am going to be talking about some topics that are, are, are dark and possibly triggering in nature. Okay, so um, I have a couple notes up here, so I'm trying to stay on track and not ramble. Um, so this is my part of hashtag me too. Let's talk about it. I was a victim for years. Um, I was attacked by Nick Rossi at Sinclair in 2008. I pressed charges on him. He was convicted of one count of sexual imposition and one count of public indecency. And after that, um, he kind of started this crusade of, uh, violence, abuse, and I mean, just a lot of, you know, he really fucked with me emotionally. Um, so he sued me twice. He, the first time he sued me for ruining his reputation. And that was just everything that was a result of him being on the sex offender registry. Um, I won. The, the court gave me my legal fees back and they dismissed the case without prejudice so that he could fucking sue me again. Um, the second time he sued me, he sued me because of something I said on WHIO. Um, at that time, he was uh, out of appeals and he was failing to register as a sex offender. So the Dayton police went to Rhode Island or Massachusetts to get him. And uh, Dayton thought that it was relevant news to Dayton and Dayton posted something on its Facebook. I, I made a comment on that page and Nick said that it was inflammatory and defamation and he sued me. And in that same lawsuit, he sued my husband also. Um, the whole, the whole time he was running like a smear campaign against me online. Um, so I, I was a victim of, of like some, like some pretty dark stuff, um, by Nick. Um, why do I matter? Um, I was on Dateline. Um, I've had reporters come to my house. I've had reporters come to my parents' house. I've had reporters call my parents. Um, I've done numerous interviews um, with different outlets and stuff. I matter because without me, there wouldn't be a Nick Rossi, Arthur Knight story. I matter because it was my DNA from my 2008 case that tied him to rapes and sexual assaults in Utah. I matter because without me there wouldn't be a story, and I matter because without me we would have never caught, we would have never caught him. Why now? Why now? Because uh, Nick Rossi, Nick Aliverdian, is dead, and I feel like I am free to speak my truth without being, you know, slapped with a lawsuit or smeared online. Nick Rossi is dead, and my lawyer says there's no way Arthur Knight can sue me without admitting him and Nick are the same person. Um, so how is this going to work? This is um. I'm going to do, I'm going to try to break it up in segments because it is a long story. I think Dateline did a great job of telling Nick's story, but they didn't tell my story. And when I thought about who do I want to tell my story, I was thinking long and hard about like all the, the people that interviewed me. And I don't, I don't want them to have some kind of agenda. I don't want them to twist it in some kind of way or, you know, try to prove some kind of point with my story. So as much as I don't want to sit here on a camera and you know, funnel all of my trauma to complete strangers. I was like, this is more important because one, I feel like it's important that any survivor of sexual abuse, sexual assault, rape, that they can come out and speak against their abuser. And I also think that it's very important that my story gets out the way I want it to. Um, so this is the route I chose to take. And this is, uh, I guess what we're going to do. So this today, I'm just going to do an introduction version, um, and then I'm going to break it up where I'm going to have one that's just about our hearing, one that's just about our sentencing, one that's just about like the smear campaigns, the lawsuits. I'll cover all of that. I've got a lot of documentation. I did make a Twitter um, posting some of the bullshit that he's uh, said about me, done to me. Um, you know, I I was able to thank you, uh, Internet Archives. I was able to. Um, he was a part of a very anti-feminist, very racist 
um, a voice for men. I can't say about their uh, their their production now. They might be different now. But back then, there was some very racist, very, I mean, they were talking about um, N-words on there. They were talking about how victims of rape liked it. Like, just some, like, very dark, twisted stuff. But Nick got affiliated with them because he was a... Uh, a lot of them on there are, they're women haters, but they're women haters because they were falsely accused of something. And in Nick's case, he was not falsely accused. He was truthfully accused, but he was just trying to get in where he could fit in. And he could fit in with these other women haters, and he thought that maybe they would join his cause. Um, so yeah, this is just going to be my introduction video. My name's Mary. Um, you can look me up on uh, the Date Municipal Court website. Um, I was the one who pressed charges against Nick in 2008 after he attacked me in a stairwell. Um, so you can look all of that up on the Dayton Municipal Court. Um, all of the, the lawsuits are public. Um, I know that there was a couple different um, sites where you could go and look at like different um, lawsuits. Both of mine are on there. Mary Gerbinski. And uh, yeah, this is my introduction video. It's it's nice to finally get my story out and be heard and be heard in the way that I want to be heard. And these are my words. There's no editing. There's no, this is just, this is how it's going to be straight from me, straight to you, um, is how we're going to do it. And uh, yeah, I think that's enough for today. Um, so I will continue to post and you know, let's get a conversation started because at the end of the day, it is really important for everyone to know the truth about Nick and who he really was, what he was capable of and what he did to me. This is important. It's important. And I really hope that if you were a victim of Nick or if you knew Nick at some point, if you feel comfortable reaching out and starting a conversation, please, 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 please reach out to me. All right. Thanks. Bye.